Okay, welcome to a quick walkthrough on how to use UDFs, user-defined functions, with Capacitor. Um, the point of UDFs is to be able to plug in your own custom code for processing, anomaly detection, etc. Whatever you need into Capacitor in the language you're comfortable with. The uh, way UDFs work is they communicate over standard in and standard out with the Capacitor process. So Capacitor will launch your process and send requests over standard in and expect responses over standard out. This Request response is done via protocol buffer serialization, and so if, you, if your language supports protocol buffers and you can write standard in and standard out, then you can write a UDF for capacitor. Today we're going to look at how to write one f in Python. Okay, so here we are in a temporary directory, and yeah, let's get started. So let's just we're going to do a simple example where we're going to write a UDF, user defined function, that will calculate the geometric um, sum of a set of points. Okay, So in Python, we've already written uh, what we call an agent for capacitor that will abstract all the communication of serializing and deserializing the protocol buffers and writing them and reading them off of standard in and standard out. So all we need to do is import that code and then write a, a simple class that will implement an interface and then we'll get everything working. So let's get started. So first we want to from agent import the agent and the handler. Okay. And then import UDF protocol buffer to Python 2. Okay. So I've already put those on my Python path. Um, I'll have a link to the docs where you can go get those. So let's get started. Class geosum have an extend handler. This isn't necessary. It's just an interface. Duck typing in Python will take care of it. But if you like it, there it is. So create our initializer. And so we're going to take the geometric sum, and we need to know two things. One, how many points we should sum up. And two, what field of the points that we're receiving should we sum up. So let's create some empty placeholder values for now. OK, great. So now. We need to implement the first method in the UDF handle interface, which is the info method. Um, the point of this method is to return information on what your UDF can do, so capacitor can correctly communicate and talk to it and validate your tick script. So first, we just everything that we send back to return from any of these methods is going to be a response, and so we just say UDF PV2 response. Whoop. Okay, so now we've got a response. So the info, we say info, and there's a few things it wants to know. First, it wants to know what type of stream we want. So we want a stream edge. So this means that we're going to consume points one at a time, and then it wants to know what we provide. And in this example, we're also going to provide point one at a time as a stream. Okay, great. Next, it wants to know what options our UDF has. So we come in and we say options and we give it a name. So let's say we need to know the field, right? So we say field and then value types. And this is just a list so we can append right to it. Um, protocol buffers in Python use magic meta classes to construct all these um, properties you're seeing. And so you typically don't assign directly to them. You kind of work with um, their methods. But you can learn about that in Google's documentation. It's not too hard to get your head around. So then UDF, PDB, and we want a string. Okay, so we're saying the field option takes one argument and it needs to be a string. Okay, so now let's add another option. We need the size option, and in this case, we want it to be an integer. Okay, great. Now let's just add another one to kind of show you what it looks like if we went a little bit crazy here. So instead of appending just a single one, we can extend. And create ourselves a list here. Start with an int, add in a double, and we've already seen string, so there's also duration. Durations are encoded as an int 64 number of nanoseconds since the epic. Oop, I'm going to miss that there. Okay. Great, so now we have three options field, size, and magic. Magic will take three options, an int, a double, or three arguments, an int, a double, and a duration. Okay, so yeah, with that, that's just enough to be able to kind of configure 
our UDF, well, we need to add a main method real quick. So, and then anything that gets printed or outputted on standard air um, will show up in the capacitor log. So we can say like starting geo sum. Okay, so there we go. Simple, we've got a main method that will initialize our agent, set our handler, and start the agent, which will then do all the standard in, standard out, serialization, deserialization. All we need is our info method, and we need to actually return from here our response. Okay, so in summary, we've defined that we want a stream edge, and we provide a stream edge, and we defined three options. So at this point, let's go ahead and configure um, our capacitor configuration to tell it about this UDF that we just wrote. Okay, so I'm going to swap over um, my, my windows here. If we open up the capacitor config and we go to the end, we'll just start our UDF section. And then we'll say UDF dot functions dot, and we, this is the name that we'll use to reference our function. So we'll call it geo sum and inside of our tick script. So we tell it which program we're going to run. In this case, it's Python. Okay, tell it the arguments. Oops, I need to double quote those. And let's give it the pass. So temp udf geo.py. It's this group file we're just writing. And then how long is your time at? So in summary, program to run and arguments. Um, we want this unbuffered. Uh, so cause Python will buffer the standard in and standard out. And if you're doing request response, it can cause some issues. So um, it's just nice to run it unbuffered. So then a timeout, basically capacitor will be sending heartbeat requests to the process and, if, and then the process will respond and if it misses one of those for more than 10 seconds, um, it will assume the process is dead and kill it. Um, 10 seconds is way high, uh, probably fine down around a second or whatever. Um, yeah, and the, the agent takes care of all that for you so you don't have to worry about that in your implementation of the handler. Okay, so we've written our configuration, we've defined our UDF, now we're going to go ahead and start capacitor. Capacitor D config capacitor and we'll set log level debug so that we can see some startup information about UDFs. Okay, so start it up, scroll back up to the top, starting, 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 and then hey look at this, we say starting geosum and then whoops and then geosum finished and it says hey loaded UDF geosum. So what happened is when capacitor started up, it spawned um, this Python process and it made the info request and it remembered those options that we defined and then it went ahead and shut down the process and then says that, hey, I've loaded the UDF called GeoSum. Great, and so now capacitor is listening for signals, ready to go. So we'll leave him hiding in the background. So now we can write a tick script um, to use our uh, geo.py UDF. So say stream, we'll just steal capacitor, or uh, telegraph data. Good old CPU usage idle. Okay, so we're just going to grab some data, and we'll say geo sum, just like we called it in our configuration. And then it has the option field, and we'll give it the name. So we'll just say grab the value, size, say grab 10 points. And then there's that magic method, right? So we could say it was an int first, right? So we can say like 2, then a double, 42.0, and then it was a duration, so like 10 seconds. Okay, in fact, you can call these multiple times. So we can call this one like 3... 2.5, one second, I'll make it two seconds. Okay, so then, then the way this will work is capacitor will check these options that are defined and then pass them to your UDF called the init function, which we'll go right now. But first, let's go ahead and define this guy. Capacitor define dash name geo dash tick geo dot tick dash type stream dash db rp telegraph default capacitor show geo so it read those didn't have a problem with those names geo sum field size magic etc in fact we could even come here and add in an extra and then go to our define of all that just define our tick again and it says hey no method extra on geosum right or we can get rid of that and we could accidentally forget the seconds 
and find it again, and it says, I got an int, but I expected a duration. So basically based on that information that we defined in our UDF, TakeScript will now validate um, the options that you set, which is great. Okay, so now let's come back to geo.py. So how do we consume those options? We define what they are. So next, we define an init method. And this one take actually receives an information object, which is our init request object. And on here are the options that were specified. So we can just say for option in init request options. We can loop through them. So we can say if op.name equals field and self dot field equals op dot values or it's basically it's arguments grab the first one and we'll say string value okay and then else if opt dot name equals size self dot size equals op dot values first one but this time it's an integer so we'll say integer value okay and then we can do an elf op dot name was magic and we can just print this out so we'll just do print anytime that the magic option is called we'll just see it get printed out okay so we've initialized our function but we need to tell capacitor whether or not we were successful in doing so so we'll create a response again udf and set it on our error and then we say return response okay at this point we can now initialize our udf based on the options that get passed in from the tick script. And then we can validate that they were what we expected and then return success false to um, capacitor. Okay, so now we need to actually do the work. So every time a point is received, the point method is called. And we'll grab our point and let's go ahead and come up here and add in a points array. Okay, so self dot points dot append point dot fields double so we're going to grab it there and self dot field okay so we're going to grab the field that's a double value and apply append it to our list of points and then we're going to say if length self dot points is equal to self dot size aka we've buffered enough data we're going to go calculate our geometric sum so geo is equal to Okay, so now again, we want to respond with a new point. But notice that not every time, like for example, if we set our size to 10, the first nine calls to point won't return anything. In fact, we don't return anything ever from this function. And we simply create a new response object, and we can write it explicitly via the agent back to capacitor. That way there's, there's no forced mapping between how many points you receive and how many points you respond. So we'll just go ahead and grab the information off of the most recent point, geo. And at this point, we'll say self.agent.write response. So this way, we're just writing an explicit response, and there's no uh, expectation of a response for every point, etc. You can just decide when they need to go, but now we need our agent. So we'll just have him passed in via the constructor here. That should be it, except for one last thing is capacitor will want to take a snapshot of our state. And so we're just going to define an empty response back so that we can tell it, hey, we did a snapshot, but we don't have anything to snapshot. Um, you could use this, for example, to serialize our self.underscore points and um, restore that on process restart. But for now, we'll just leave that as an exercise to you later. Okay, so there we go. Now we're returning a valid response out of a snapshot, and it'll see that it's empty, and then it won't save it. Great, so that should be it for our geo.py. So a quick review. We have our info, our field, our size, and our magic options, and then init. We apply those options to the actual instance of this class, validate them, respond, and then we have our actual meet here, which is to go calculate the product um, sum of all of these these values. And yeah, so that's it. Let's take a quick look at our geo.tick real quick. We don't have anything after it, so let's kind of, let's just throw in an alert here that will log things to log. I'll just say lambda true 
log slash temp udf geo.log. Perfect. Okay, so now we're actually doing something with the result of geo.sum. And okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and find our tick script again and then reload him. Okay, so then if we come over here, we see that it was called. It says starting geosum. We see the two print statements for the magic. It says 2.42, and then we get 10 seconds and 2 seconds. Okay. So now we can see that down here that the geosum is processed 112 points, and it's spit out 103, so minus 10, basically, for how many points, that kind of that buffer there that we created, and then it's spitting them out. So then if we go look at our geo.log, and we follow it, you can see that every second, just like Telegraph is sending the data, we're getting these really massively large numbers that in, you know, are the product of all of our CPU usage for that last 10 seconds. Okay, so that point, obviously, the product of your CPU usage isn't all that powerful, but in just a few lines, Python code, and not too long to write it, you have your own custom processor instead of capacitor. So at this point, Go check out the documentation here at this link that has a much rich, more rich example about how to use capacitor UDFs to do custom anomaly detection and other things. And thank you very much for watching.